the Bangladesh Marine Academy approach. Uh, today, our host, Dr. Sajid Hussain, will be our speaker. Uh, so I would like to welcome him, uh, thank the Bangladesh Marine Academy for being the sponsors of our human element stream and hand over to Sajid. Sajid, welcome. Thank you very much. Greetings from Bangladesh Marine Academy. This is Sajid Hussain. And today we would like to highlight our academy through this small session, I will say. It will be around 45 minutes. At the beginning, we will have our promotional video for you and followed by PowerPoint presentation. At the end, we will have question answer session. Hope that you'll be enjoying a glimpse of Bangladesh Marine Academy. So can, I, can I have the video now playing?
Hello, viewers. Hope that you could enjoy that one. I'm not very sure that everyone could see it because of the speed in the internet. Well, now we are going to present our academy through a PowerPoint presentation. Here we go. So this is our Bangladesh Marine Academy. We call it, or we love to call it, as our maritime motherland. And you can see one of the images of our graduation ceremony, normally held in the month of December. So historically, it was 1971 when, when we got liberated and we got a new country named Bangladesh. And you can see the flags and at the bottom, our merchant marine flag of Bangladesh. Initially, the academy was established in 1962, but anyway, through our independence, during our liberation war, that old mercantile marine academy was shifted to Karachi of Pakistan and our father of maritime Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was the leader of our liberation. He founded a new academy here named Bangladesh Marine Academy. We have our mission, developing world-class maritime leaders. We have our vision as emerging as a leading maritime education, training and research the providers through continuous innovation and endeavor. And we have our inspiration. It is Allah who has subjected sea to you, verse from Holy Quran. And in the picture, you can see the cadets' residence and the dining hall. These are our motivational slogans. Our Allah Meter is our maritime motherland where the maritime leaders are born, developing world-class maritime leaders, ensuring quality cadets into seafaring. And we have over five decades of maritime educational excellence. How about our cadets? We are talking about our cadets because we, because we feel that we are promoting or raising our cadets up to the desired standard of IMO. You know the model courses for the cadets. Basing on that, in fact, it used to be following STCW 78 and then revised with STCW 95 version and then again revised in 2000, by 2012 according to STCW 2010. We have our two branches, nautical and engineering. We provide pre-C nautical science and pre-C marine engineering as part of the branches from the academy. In parallel, we have our Bachelor of Maritime Science Honors degree awarded by Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Maritime University in Bangladesh. Both the courses, duration, is four years. At the end, they get both the certificates. One is professional, one is academic. And you know the structure, two years in academy, one year at sea, and one year at academy again. In the shipping world, this academy traditionally was always blessed with the international attachment or recognition. So here are our latest ones. In 2019, we got recognition from UK Merchant Navy Training Board. We could establish partnering relation with World Maritime University Sweden. We are the first academy in the world 
jointly recognized by Nautical Institute and the Institute of Marine Engineering Science and Technology. And we got scholarships for our cadets and instructors about to start from EU, which is popularly known as Erasmus Plus. We also have recognition. In fact, we got it in 2014. Now it is renewed again in 2019 by the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore because our cadets normally goes to two, three places for their competency certificates. One is UK, another one is Singapore, another one is Hong Kong. Therefore, in Singapore, when they go against this recognition, they get exemption for a few subjects in nautical and engineering. Right at this moment, we have three initiatives in our hand. One is signing MOU with Southampton Solent University. Another one is recognition of UK MCA, Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, and signing MOU with Maritime Academy of Asia and Pacific Philippines. In fact, these were supposed to be taking place in March this year, March, April, but due to the change situation of Corona, uh, we have now kept in our hand. We hope that soon we'll be completing all these three initiatives. But it would be interesting to you to mention here that we are having our quality certificate through DNVGL since 2016. In 2013, we have our membership with International Maritime Rescue Federation based in London. In 2011, we got our recognition from European Commission, which is specifically European Maritime Safety Agency. 2010, we got our research link with Australian Maritime College. We also got professional links with IMEC, ISF, ITF, IMRST, and Nautical Institute. And we also got our membership of Global Maritime Education and Training Association based in Australia, Intern Manager, and Marine Beach TV. This is, these are a few pictures of our campus. Probably you now understand why we call it our maritime motherland. Captain Edward James Cullen from both British Martin Navy and British Royal Navy. He was the commandant of, in this academy during 1975 to 1980. British Prime Minister James Callaghan visited this academy on 4th January 1978. The then IMO Secretary General C.P. Srivastava visited this academy on 3rd January 1980. In fact, out of that, we got the branch status of World Maritime University in 1990. Here you see this <clears throat> Mr. C.P. Srivastava visit and receiving salutes from the cadets. Mr. E. E. Mitropoulos, again, the, the then IMO Secretary General visited this academy in 2011. This is a very special moment in our academy on 26 February 2011. Our Honorable Prime Minister visited and joined us as the chief guest in the graduation parade ceremony. Then IMO Secretary General Mr. Koji Sakimiju attended the Day of the Sea celebration in our academy on 25th June, as well as Golden Jubilee of this academy celebration. Kita Klim, the current IMO Secretary General, also visited our academy on the Emerald Jubilee celebration in 2017. Captain John Lloyd, 
who is the chief executive officer of Nautical Institute, visited this academy in 2018. And again, Captain John Lloyd and Mr. David Loosley, just outgone chief executive of IMRS London, visited together in this year, January. In fact, they came here, and in that occasion, we received the joint recognition from Nautical Institute IMRS as the first institution in the world. We had our development in various kinds, only a few here, that we got in recognition. We transformed our past degree course for the cadets to four years honors degree course. And we have our first simulator and control laboratory. We have expanded. This academy is traditionally is always keeping pace with the IT development in form of right now we are following the e-learning for the cadets. We have Wi-Fi campus. We have video conferencing in our classrooms. These are all technologically equipped for the cadets. Here you see the full mission navigation simulator, which has been installed in 2019. And this is dedicated for the cadets training. Our cadets are always inspired to have some kind of specialty professionally besides their normal studies. So few of the cadets came up and they have established a club, Vision Sustainability Club. With this, they are learning, they are practicing environment protection, marine environment protection, and so many activities continuously around the year. Here you can see the glimpse of our cadets. Few of the male cadets on left side and few of the female cadets sitting in a program. We are very much proud about our cadets turnout. They are smart, they are skilled, many time leaders of course, not only for Bangladesh, for the world or the shipping world. They are economically useful elements for the family, society, country and world. So in this academy, we like to say that we are providing them professionally bridge, environmentally friendly syllabus. They are not only developing by their professional or academic, but they are staying here 24 hours and they are being developed to be world citizen and particularly ships, officers, engineers. You can see the female cadets from this academy. We opened door in 2012, and at the moment we are having more than 70 female cadets. Most of them are working. A few of them, of, of course, they are working ashore, but many of them are working in ships. I can proudly present that in 2018, graduation parade among all the male cadets, female cadets, this female cadet Nabila became the best all-round cadet and was awarded the president's gold medal. So you are those who are from shipping with shipping background, you understand that after, after trading comes the most enjoyable moment, throwing cap towards sky. And so to show that the moral is sky high, moral is ocean wide. We, Bangladesh Marine Academy is proud to say that our cadets footsteps on every corners of the world now. Thank you very much all our audience, those who are in front and those who will be enjoying this piece of program through IMRS TV, we are grateful to you. We need your all out cooperation to have our boys and girls to be the 
future marine professionals. Well, thank you very much, Sajid, for your presentation. That was very interesting. I'd love to see what everyone's doing over in Bangladesh. Uh, we'll now move on to our Q&A session. We've had some questions in from the audience. Uh, so I'll start with the first question. Um, what are the steps that the Bangladesh Marine Academy has taken to create an example of online learning and examination during the pandemic? Thank, I thank the, uh, yes, the Muhammad Ikramul Hussain for this question. Anyway, yes, uh, in this pandemic situation, first thing is that all our academy, cadets are not in our academy, but we are continuing with our online education. Mostly the cadets are being connected to the to the online classes and they are following the class lectures and the teachers are having their class lectures followed by assignments and et cetera, other things. And therefore the cadets are, they are physically absent, but we are having our education through online technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah. Yes, we have please? another question from uh, Dr. Angelica Balon. She says, in November 2019, she was happy and honoured to, to have visited the impressive BMA ably led by Dr. Sajid. Uh, how are the BMA able to recruit good female students? Uh, can you tell us a bit about their on-the-job training and their employability after they leave the academy? Thank you very much, Dr. Angelica. Yes, it was uh, very enjoyable to receive you in our campus. At this situation, you understand that everyone is facing the very changed and challenging situation, but there is no difference between male and female in recruitment. Although this year recruitment, we haven't commenced yet, but last year we selected male as well as female students. They are at their homes now because they joined and after a few days they had to leave the academy and now they are following the online education. On the job training, yes, the last year those who passed out, as you have asked the question for the female cadets here, yeah, the female cadets are also joining ships. Few of them already joined and few of them are now awaiting. But we're quite hopeful that they will be joining very soon because you understand the last few months from March, uh, their joining or changing clues was almost stopped, but it has commenced now. And so we are continuously, we have used the time, we are continuously in touch with the employers and now we are getting the fruits. The joining in ships or crew change has commenced and they are getting employed. Hope you are happy with this answer. Thank you very much. Uh, our next question is from Martin Shaw, and he says, do you have any problems getting sea time for the cadets? Thank you, Martin. The cadets need uh, 12 months sea service in during our third year. At the moment, we had, we had problem during last few years, say 2015, 16, 17. But from 2017, in fact, we have, we could do marketing for our cadets. And at the moment, right at this moment, the supply and demand is almost equal. So therefore, the, uh, getting sea time for the cadets is no more a challenging, although it is always difficult as always, but anyway, we are having our prospective many employers and they are employing our cadets. So we are quite uh, comfortable in 2019, 2018, 2019, 2020 now in terms of employment of our cadets. 
Lynn. Uh, Thank you. Next. Next question uh, is from Paul Marshall. And he says, you have demonstrated how you try to develop the candidates to become proficient maritime professionals. How do you determine who will be a suitable candidate? Although I don't see the question here, but anyway, uh, if you repeat the question uh, one more time, Yes, please. of course. Um, you have demonstrated how you try to develop the candidates to become proficient maritime professionals. How do you determine who will be a suitable candidate? Oh, you, okay, I got it. Yeah, thank you for the question. We have a very strict and rigorous admission process. We not only take the written examination, but viva, physical test, medical test, and our viva is little different. It's not the question and answer, but observing someone, how he reacts when we ask question, we don't put much emphasis on the answer he or she gives, but how he or she reacts, how he or she talks, looks, moves, works, everything we observe. And then also we judge them for their fluency, for their smartness and mental ability. And so we try to figure out who could be the prospective future marine professional? Hope you find this logical. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had a question from Jayan Pillai. Um, he's asking how, uh, given that English is the international language in the maritime world, uh, are there any aspects of uh, courses at the BMA that assist in strengthening cadets' language skills in English? Yes, uh, you are right uh, to some extent, because you have to understand that English is not our mother tongue. It's a second language, but in our schools, from the very beginning, English is being taught. This is number one. Number two, when he or she comes to our academy, we have strict Examination, not only examination, I mean vocal, in every sense we judge. And then in our academy, the working language is English. All our lectures, everything in English. Cadets are encouraged to speak before audience, weekly basis. Therefore, every cadet during their two years time, they come with their speeches or topics in front of the audience quite a few times. Let's say around 10, 12 times. And also English newspaper, English news, English uh, environment we are trying to create in this campus. However, we do, we do accept English is our second language. So therefore we try to ensure their ability to speak, to right, at least at a minimum standard. But you will find nowadays that in the new generation, you will find many of them are very, very fluent, very, very, uh, very expert on speaking English. Great. And, Thank you very yeah. much. Um, another question. You have good links to so many international institutions like the IMO. How are your cadets uh, placed in international job markets? Well, thank you for this question. As I said earlier, that during 2014, 15, 16, in fact, we had, you understand that in the whole shipping world, the supply and demand was, in terms of marine manpower, was imbalanced. And therefore, we had some problem or challenges finding job. But for the last three years, we are in a very comfortable position in terms of employment of our cadets. Yes, as your question includes IMO, not only IMO, I have shown that how many uh, international recognition or affiliations we are having which clearly shows that this Bangladesh Marine Academy is 
moving ahead. We say it moving at full speed ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Sajid. Um, another question here. What are your plans for recruiting more female students in the future and to further increase diversity within the BMA? Yes, uh, you, you will uh, definitely understand that raising females with such a specialized profession and getting them into a very manly profession seafaring. It is basically a challenging one. If you go to the history, you will find the women, many times women, I mean, those who became successful, they had to sacrifice their whole life, their social life, family life, so many things. And then they paved the way. And today, the young female cadets of our academy is just working on that on those roads and you understand that ILO, ITF, those who are working for the female environment on board ship, we are in touch with them, we are in touch with all our graduates on board and we are observing, we are always beside them and so we understand that our females so far, they are working safely in the ocean wind ships and hope that this will increase. When this will increase, I mean, the environment will become more friendly. Yes, we will be increasing our female cadets number. We are waiting for that. We sometimes talk ourselves that there will be someday 50-50 will be the ratio between male and female in ships. Let's work towards that then. <laughs> uh, another question from Jayan. He has said um, that ships uh, maritime institutes tend to select people who are the brightest. Ships require competence and common sense. Um, so I suppose what he's asking is how you achieve the balance between um, the more academic learned side of um, working in maritime with the more sort of common sense on the job learned training. Thank you, uh, Jayan. Yes, this is a quite interesting side of our recruitment and then getting them ready or raising for the ship's life. Yes, I do agree. We all agree that ship's life is not directly for the meritorious boys and girls. It is for a person who possesses qualities, almost all qualities. They should be smart enough. They should be very, I will say, presence of mind and always wake always eyes open. Therefore, it is not our target to recruit the meritorious boys and girls. Rather, during the viva and during our other psychological tests and all these things, yes, we see that the, comparatively, the second group of the meritorious boys and girls, they do better. Therefore, we are confident of recruiting the best we don't mean based by meritory, merit only, but merit come ability and fitness both. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Paul Marshall has asked, do you regularly get feedback regarding uh, both positive and negative aspects of the training received by the cadets from both employers and cadets? No, yes, we have our systems we get, in fact, in two ways. One is directly from the employers. Some officer in that company act as the point of contact for the cadets. And on the other hand, we get feedback from the cadets also. So therefore, we judge. We judge ourselves uh, by ourselves that how the companies are having the impression on our cadets, on our training standards. Uh, on the other hand, how the cadets also uh, finding their administration or the management on their professional life, whether they are being uh, trained properly on board or not. So therefore, we understand that this is a very good balance among the academy, the employer, and the cadets. And at the moment, we can say that we are very much satisfied in most cases. 
exception is always there, but we are not uh, uh, concerned with exception. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've had another question here um, from Captain Les Husker, and he's asked what proportion um, of female cadets to male cadets are trained at your academy? It is about 10% at the moment. We have our approved number 160 male cadets and 20 female cadets. But you understand this is because we have opened our door in only 2012. We are still struggling with our female cadets employment. And at the moment, we understand 10% is quite comfortable. If we find in future, near future, a favorable condition, definitely we will go for higher number. Thank you. Uh, Syed Parvez has says, uh, what approach does BMA take in order to ensure job opportunities for their graduated candidates, or cadets, sorry? Well, number one, for many, many years, we are keeping contact with the prospective employers. Number two, we invite them to visit our academy, particularly during our graduation ceremonies. And number three, we go to various prospective places, like the first one is obviously Singapore, and also to other places in Middle East, in London, in, uh, in Hong Kong and some other places where we try to meet the prospective employers and market our cadets. So far, at the moment, at least for last few years, we are very much confident on our employers. In fact, it is probably difficult to believe that we are running shortage of cadets in some extent, because some companies, their requirement is very high. But anyway, at the moment, we are very much balanced. Thank you. Um, another couple of questions. Uh, how do you see the BMA growing and developing? Uh, what are your plans for the future? If you see today, time was short, but we could not show you so many other developments with time. You see that the the academy was not having any graduation. And then two years graduation came, then develop, right? <clears throat> upgraded to three years past degree course, and then finally to four years bachelor degree course. On the other hand, you understand that the India Academy, we have increased our training facilities to a greater extent up to the full mission simulator. And still we are going all our cadets are doing research. All our cadets are with the very high quality library facilities, Wi-Fi facilities, and they are uh, they are exploring. I mean, before uh, leaving the academy, they are not only being given a graduation traditional certificate, but all kinds of other ability, fitness, and everything, skills. Therefore, uh, with time, we will grow. No doubt about it. At the moment, you understand in 2012, uh, to, sorry, 2018, in collaboration with the Maritime University, we have also commenced MSc degree in Maritime Science, where our, many of the cadets are studying at the moment. So we will have our research center by 2022, dedicated for the MSc students. And therefore, mm, yes, of course, time is development. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another question here. Do the majority of your cadets go on to be seafarers? Um, and what other career streams do they go on to? Yes, our, uh, yes, our first goal is to become seafarer. But you understand that out of their bachelor degree, bachelor of maritime science degree, they can easily go for higher studies. And nowadays, I see quite a good number of, let's say, 20% or 30% cadets are going for higher education, not only in Bangladesh, they are also going to Canada, UK, European universities, and many other places. So therefore, we understand the basic training in the academy for four years, including one year at sea, making them a very efficient and promising 
citizen of Bangladesh who can excel in many ways in environment, in merit as a maritime lawyer, may business, so many areas in shipping. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, how has BMA adapted to having female cadets? Are there any particular measures that you've had to undertake um, to accommodate female cadets and what feedback have you had from them? Yes, we understand initially in 2011, when we were supposed to receive female cadets for the first time in the history in 2012. So we, I mean in the, our colleagues, our officers, staff, we had a series of meetings, arrangements, in terms of their living, their classrooms, their movement, adopting with morning physical training parade. The daily life, regimental life in the academy is very tough, but we became very happy that after recruitment, we found that all female recruited female cadets were quite fit in every respect. Not a single one left the academy out of this regimental training. So therefore, we have we are confident on our uh, ability of our female cadets. Thank you. Uh, another question from Captain Les Husker. Uh, I don't suppose you know what percentage of BMA cadets obtain um, a Bachelor of Science in Nautical Science or a BSc Eng. Hmm. This is, uh, you understand that when someone comes to the academy, uh, dropout, we are not acquainted with dropouts. Uh, very seldom, maybe in five years one. Uh, so therefore, uh, all all cadets, not only females, all cadets, they, are, they graduate themselves at the end of four years. Thank you. Um... Well, I suppose I know what the answer to this question is going to be, but do you think the Bangladesh Marine Academy is the best maritime organization in Bangladesh amongst the other academy and why? Oh, okay. You understand after having all this information, particularly the international standing of our academy, we can firmly say that it is one of the top 10 maritime academies of the world out of our recognitions, affiliations, everything. And therefore, this is not a matter of discussion anymore, not a matter of probability anymore. In fact, we are. Therefore, it's a pride of the nation. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and just one last Bye. question Thank here you. for you. Um, do you have, uh, for example, knowledge exchange programs or exchange programs in general with any other organizations or academic institutions? Yes, yes, we, we, we do have. Although not many opportunity come because of various reasons, but you understand we have cadets exchange. Uh, two years before, sorry, one year before, the cadets visited the one of the leading academy, Marine Academy, Tulani Maritime Institute in, in India. And we have planned that we have just seen in the slides, if you have, that the European Commission, we, from the European Commission, we got some special arrangement of scholarships for our careers and for our instructors. It is yet to be, in fact, it could be started out of Corona, unluckily. Uh, it has also been uh, suspended at the moment, but we are waiting by the end, of, we're hoping that by the end of this year, we will be getting those scholarships. And so there will be exchange programs with European Maritime Academy or universities. Thank you very much. Um, we have actually come to the end of our questions now, um, but I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today for your fascinating presentation. Uh, and a huge thanks once again to Bangladesh Marine Academy for sponsoring our Human Element stream. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. And to all of you watching at home or at work, thank you for joining us. And I hope that you will stay on to check out our sessions later on today. Uh, so to you, thanks. Most, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, you're most welcome. One more time, greetings from Bangladesh Marine Academy.